What's up? So this is the Lego NASA Space Shuttle Discovery. Definitely my most anticipated and by far my favorite set of 2021 so far, because you never know what they're gonna release. And also probably the best looking display piece that Lego has ever made. I'd even use words like elegant and beautiful to describe this thing because not only does this model accurately represent the real Space Shuttle Discovery, which is a beautiful and elegant looking thing by itself, but just the way that this was designed, the stand that you get to build for it, the way that the shuttle sits on that stand, everything about it is very aesthetically pleasing. And I quite enjoy looking at it. <laughs> So this set is specifically commemorating Space Shuttle Discovery's STS-31 mission, which was the mission that launched the Hubble Telescope. So not only are you getting Discovery, but you're also getting the Hubble Telescope. And this is not by any means just a side build for the shuttle. This isn't something that LEGO just threw a couple extra pieces in for. Like this is very much a significant part of the set. It takes up a pretty good amount of the building time for the whole set, and it takes up a pretty good amount of the total parts of the set as well. It's got its own little stand and its own little plaque, and it looks just as good as the shuttle. We'll look at this a little bit more in a minute, but let's focus on Discovery. So with 2,354 pieces, this is the largest space shuttle model that LEGO has ever released, and Building at that bigger scale, they were able to pack a ton of detail into this thing and do some things that they've never been able to do before with previous shuttle sets. Uh, things like including the flight deck and the mid deck in the crew compartment, which you can look at by removing the roof of the flight deck to see the astronaut seats, the control panels, and all of the switches and stuff. And then by removing the flight deck itself, you can look down into the mid deck to see the fifth astronaut seat, the hatch for the airlock, and a couple suggestions of storage lockers and all sorts of stuff, all sorts of goodies in there. The overall shaping of the model I think is pretty damn good. I mean, you can line this thing up with a photo of the real shuttle in pretty much any direction and it's gonna, it's gonna fit right in pretty much perfectly. I mean, proportionally, there's a couple things that could be better on the shuttle. There's some things that could be smaller, some things that could be bigger, but the overall shaping and sizing of this thing is pretty damn spot on. The space shuttle has a very distinct shape due to its wings, which are very specific to the space shuttle, and the designer did a great job on these wings, shaping them up, the angle of them, the actual building process of them, the internal structure is very interesting and was very fun to build. And I really like that they were able to replicate the dark gray carbon wing using these dark gray slopes and plates uh, that, that really, really, really looks good. And it, it doesn't really look like a shuttle if you don't have those. And that's something that they've never been able to do before in building at this bigger scale. They were able to include that and I just think it looks great. The nose of the shuttle is definitely something that has caused a little bit of controversy in the LEGO community online. I've seen a lot of people saying that they don't like the front of the shuttle, they think it doesn't look right, it's got too many straight lines, too many gaps, all this stuff, but I think what you gotta remember is LEGO is a very blocky, grid-based system, and they're not always able to achieve every single curve of certain models, and the front of the space shuttle is very curvy and very round, but I think in my personal opinion with the building limitations, the parts limitations, even with those little imperfections, the designer did a phenomenal job on the nose of the shuttle and I think it looks like a Lego set, which is what it's supposed to be. The rear of the shuttle or the aft fuselage is probably the most accurate and best looking part of the outside of the shuttle. Just everything back here, the tail fin, the OMS pods, the three main engines and the body flap are all done so well. So mixed together, it just makes this section of the, of the model look really, really good and really, really accurate. Um, and also the rear of the shuttle is where you activate all of the action features, if you will, of the model. So this upper main engine, can be rotated and there's actually a mechanism inside there that allows the elevons on either wing to move up and down, which I think is a nice touch. And then the body flap down at the bottom can be moved up and down as it would in real life. But when you push that body flap in, 
it deploys the landing gear, which is just so, so rad. And the actual mechanism that makes that work and couples the rear and front landing gear together so they all pop out at the same time, genius, absolutely genius. And definitely my favorite mechanism moving part of any Lego set ever. The way that that was done was so cool. And the fact that it actually does that and you have deployable landing gear via this secret little secret little mechanism. It's just super cool that you can display this thing on the landing gear. The landing gear is definitely a little bit too far back on the shuttle. It should definitely be more, more forward, but with all of the structure and everything inside of this set, I understand why it's there. And the fact that you can actually do that, I can see past that little inaccuracy. Now onto the payload bay, which is probably the highlight of the set. Uh, the payload bay doors are built up using a brand new piece for this year that was specifically made for this set. These curved wall elements here, I think it's a great piece. But once you open up those payload bay doors, you will start to see something very, very space-like. I mean, come on, are you kidding me? That shiny surface, it looks so good and it looks so real because that's actually what the inside of the doors look like. And yes, those are stickers and everyone has complained about those, so I'm not gonna talk too much about them, but I can confirm that those were a pain in the ass to apply. But once you get it done, even if you mess up a couple of them, the finished look of those stickers is so worth it and it looks so good. Just take your time and get it done because you will be so happy with it in the end. The inside of the cargo bay is pretty plain. It's just a big open space as it is in real life because that's where the Hubble would have been or different satellites and modules for the space station, but it looks pretty good and it looks pretty accurate. You have the all important candid arm, which is a very simple build, but can be articulated in whatever way you feel, however you want to display it. On the rear and front walls of the payload bay, you have a couple cameras, a printed American flag, the communication satellite, and then the airlock hatch down at the bottom there. I just knocked something off, knocked one of the cameras off. Can't be having that. Now taking a look at the Hubble telescope, it has its own little stand, just like the shuttle, but it can be easily removed. You just pull that stand right off. And probably the first thing you'll notice is that the Hubble is actually very shiny, just like it would be in real life. And the way that they achieve that is by using a process called drum lacquering, which I don't really know the full process and how it works, but basically it's just them applying a layer of silver ink to the Lego pieces to get that shine. And I think it looks really, really good. And I think if they just used gray pieces, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have really captured the look of the Hubble, but this thing is great. The build of it was enjoyable and it's uh, kind of complex. You obviously have the big solar panels on either side, which are like a thin plastic uh, sheet that you popped out of a bigger sheet. I've never seen that before, but I don't see how else they would have done that. Uh, they can be rotated around, obviously. You have the aperture door that can be opened and closed to protect Hubble's lens from harsh sunlight and debris and stuff like that. You have the suggestion of what NASA calls the milk stools on either side, which are basically just bumpers so the Hubble wouldn't move too much inside of the shuttle. Got a couple of satellites for communication and then Back here at the back, there's actually this little piece that can be removed, and that's actually the slot for the stand to display it inside of the shuttle, which I'll show you in a minute. But this little piece here has some, some printed electronics tiles on it, and that's supposed to represent the piece that they actually replaced on the Hubble years and years ago. So I think that's a nice little touch that they just put those tiles on there to represent that. Got some nice greebling on the back couple little antennas or whatever, whatever those are supposed to be. Looks pretty good. Now, like I said, you can display this inside of the shuttle. So if you don't wanna have this on its stand itself, you just gotta remove that little piece that we talked about, which is where you can install the third stand, which is this little black thing here, this little black assembly. And that just sticks right inside of that little slot. And then this sits inside of the payload bay of the shuttle. There's a little slot for it. Displaying it like this, I think is the best way to display both of these things together. Obviously you have that big black stand there, but I mean, I think it looks pretty damn good. And also you can just display the Hubble inside of the cargo bay. If you wanna remove the solar panels, fold up those satellites and just stick it down inside there. 
to look like it's being transported. That's an option as well. It fits pretty nice and snug down in there. And then also, they do include these little assemblies right here, which are supposed to represent the solar panels before they were rolled out. So the solar panels rolled up because that's how they were actually brought into space. They were rolled up. So you can actually remove these larger unrolled solar panels and attach these little pieces here to give it that look as well. There's just so many good things about this. And I love the fact that Lego included an extra stand and a stand for the shuttle, a stand for the Hubble and the landing gear. There's just so many ways that you can display this set. And I think that adds to the value and the joy of actually owning this thing is you have so many different options of how you want to display it for, you know, however you decide or the space that you have. You have quite a plethora of options when it comes to displaying this model. And I mean, do I need to say anything else? Just, just look at the thing. I mean, come on. So good. Oh, love it. So yeah, there's our little look at the LEGO NASA Space Shuttle Discovery. Let me know down below what you think about the set. And also, just let me know what you think about this video because this is something that I've never actually done on this channel. We've never reviewed LEGO sets, but I love LEGO. So I just decided that maybe this would be something I felt like doing. And I think it's something that I'm gonna continue to do regardless of what anybody says, but I'd still like to know your opinion. So let me know down below, let's chat about it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I look forward to making another one. I got a couple other sets that I wanna show you guys and talk about, so look forward to more videos like this and just more Lego content. That's what I wanna do, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I hope you're okay with that. Hope you all have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon in the next vid. I'm glad you're here. Make something. Thank you.